Okay, so for this one, we're going to be starting here in the labs block 4.1, um, not on the mother load. I was going to start doing this one from scratch, the whole IQ of mothers with gifted children, but it's going to take way too long, and it's just repeating things we've already seen in the previous um, databases. So here I just want to look at question three which we're checking the conditions. So there are three things you have to do in order to uh, perform a hypothesis test. You need to make sure they're independent, the sample size is large enough, and that uh, the data sets are approximately symmetric. So you want that bell curve. So independence, it's literally just uh, that it is less than 10% uh, of the population. So if, say, uh, there are 100 gifted children in the world, if you have 15, that does not uh, give you that they're independent. Your sample size has to be large enough, um, which is what I said to the entrepreneurship teacher, because our survey had 32 people, and this was 30, so we can assume it is statistically significant. It's a whole bunch of bullshit, uh, but it doesn't matter. And then our skew, our data are approximately symmetric, as you can see up here, we can kind of see the bell curve. And um, yeah, so that's the only thing uh, we're going to look at for uh, part one. We just wanted to clear through the uh, conditions. So for part two, again, I'm just going to give you guys a rundown of what the teacher did because we've seen, the, seen this already. So um, again, our null hypothesis is that mu is equal to 100, and our alternative is that it is not equal. So what does it say? So if you look at a normal graph, our hypothesis would be a two-tailed test because it's different. So this implies uh, two tails. Um, so you assume that the null hypothesis is true, so therefore your mu is equal to 100. Um, Again, this is things we've already seen. So I'm sorry if I'm going fast. There's absolutely no need to uh, pause and like, plus we're gonna see the same thing uh, in the second example. So there's frankly no need to uh, waste a lot of time. So again, a little checklist, X bar, S, S, E, uh, T stat, and P value. Uh, so here we get our X bar, which is your mean of your data frame. So your data frame is your sample. That is not your population. That is your sample. Um, so getting your X bar, it is getting your sample mean. Um, so therefore, we already have our X bar. Then we have our S, which is a standard deviation. So you can cross that out. You have your N, which is the length. Um, I'm going to add this here. So we have our N which is just calculating the length of your uh, database. And finally, we have our standard error, which is just your S divided by the square root of N. <coughs> so you have that. So what do we do next? By the way, this is things we've already seen. Um, nothing uh, crazy, not rocket science. We've already looked at this in previous examples. So here, um, something interesting happens. So we get our t stat, uh, x bar minus mu over se. We've seen this, se. So we have our mu. Uh, they get it, they give it to us um, up here. It's this. This is a mu. Uh, we even labeled it here. Could have used mu zero. Um, doesn't matter. But uh, racer. So. Sorry if I'm going fast again, we've already seen this. The only thing that changes from what we saw in the last uh, video is that instead of um, calculating, so you can see that the formula is different. I'm gonna go back to the mother load and that's gonna stay there. Uh, that's great. Uh, da -da 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 -da. So where is it? Here, so here we calculated uh, just our ss.tcdf, 
So essentially what we were calculating was just this tiny thing here, because it is less than. Um, so usually a way I uh, remember this is that wherever the arrow points, the uh, uh, colored area is going to be that way. So if it is greater than, you're going to calculate this part. Here, just remember to put uh, that mu always goes to the left and whatever you're calculating goes to the uh, right. Because if you have it the other way around, you're <laughs> not calculating the right thing. So uh, where's my eraser? So that's the only different thing here. Since it's a two-tailed test, um, we're doing one minus and then we're multiplying it times two because essentially what we're doing is just saying, hey, look, um, what's this area? And then you multiply it times two to get the probability under this one. So that is easy and uh, not nothing crazy, nothing out of the ordinary. We've seen this already. Um, and we can complete our checklist. Uh, T stat, P val. And we can see P value is 0 0.000. So P is low. We reject your HO. We've seen this easy, simple. You got this in the bag. So we delete this whole thing. So what I wanted to see specifically, I'm going to pause it here and go back to this. Um, so I just, this is for question two. I just wanted to do a, uh, I copied these from the teacher so you guys can see uh, that the conditions are kind of satisfied here. You, uh, and to get your summary statistics, just, um, this is more for aesthetic purposes, and if they ask you, you have to do it. But again, nothing crazy. So what I wanted to show you here is how to do this. Again, uh, using a, a, a CSV database, how to use the Python documentation. So we're going to use our dear old uh, res equals SMW dot S that's W. This is literally the bread and butter for everything you're going to do from here on out. I swear, I, you should have this like tattooed or something. Um, so since we're looking at um, mother IQ, let's go back. So we've checked the conditions. We've provided a histogram. Hypothesis test um, that the IQ of mothers is different than the average IQ for the population, which is 100. You use a alpha value of 0 0.1. So let's actually backtrack a little bit got a bit ahead of myself. Um, so the first thing we're going to say is that your HO is that the mu is equal to 100 under HA. Your alternative hypothesis is that mu is uh, different to 100. So by that, we can already tell it is a two-tailed test since we're looking at difference. Um, <laughs> looks like a shark pin. My graphs are terrible, but it doesn't really matter. Um, I am recording? Yeah. Uh, so the first thing uh, you're going to want to do is get your res, your results, in order to get uh, the descriptive statistics of this exact column. So or you're looking at uh, mother IQ. So we're going to do data frame dot uh, mother IQ. And then uh, here, we're going to do uh, easy, simple t-stat. Oops. t-stat, eval. eval, the freedom, freedom. And this is rest dot uh, t, give me one second. I don't know the formulas by memory. Have them memorized, or er, sorry. And there's always like a formula sheet. So uh, it's res dot t, wait, I'm going to just copy it. So here's the formula. Um, I copied it wrong. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I apologize um, for copying it wrong. The coffee just hit and I'm running like an energizer bunny. So I'm hyperactive and I make a lot of mistakes as well. Um, so you have your results here. You're getting your res 
um, your descriptive your descriptive statistics. So um, actually, let's do let's do something interesting. Let's switch it up. Let's print the rest. Let's see what this does. Okay, that's great. Um, that is an enigma that's going to haunt me during the test. So here in value, you're going to put 100. Why is that? Because, um, and let's actually put this here. So you're new. 100. Um, so what you're telling this little formula is, uh, with your results from your sample, prove this in this way. So you're telling it with your sample results, prove a two-sided uh, hypothesis test using your sample. That is uh, what you're telling it. Um, so here you're just going to have to put you know, zero and you're going to get your commas right because Python's just like a big baby. And then I'm just going to copy what the teacher uses to make this look pretty. So it's just in order for you guys to just look at the T set and the P value. And if you remember, if you recall, we had already seen on the like raw statistics, statistics computations that our P value is equal to 0 0.00. Um, so here again, um, we see that uh, it is in fact 0, 0.00. And if we were to copy, where is my little thing here? So uh, copy this. Uh, we're gonna. I had it differently. That's that's not mine, is it? That is not it. We're gonna do this. I copy this one. Da, da, da. And we're just gonna quickly define alpha, which was uh, zero point one. So if we run this, uh, that is wrong. Give me one second. What's going on there? Okay. Um, you can backtrack. I just forgot to put. This was as P V A L, and it is supposed to have a capital letter. That was what that was what was going on. Don't get scared that it was uh, wrong. So easy, simple. Uh, our p value is low, and that is still running from the past one. Uh, what is going on? Am I doing okay? Anyway, let's scratch that. Let's just print our p value. That is still copying the p-value from the previous one. So our p-value is essentially zero. You can see it in uh, this one because we're using the exact same example. Uh, I don't know why the formatting decided to screw up there, but p-value is 0, 0 0.00. When the p is low, you reject your null hypothesis. So. Um, what you're saying is um, we could not find enough information to prove that uh, that this um, that the null hypothesis is true. So uh, yeah, so you're gonna know that your mu is probably different than a hundred. I apologize for the whole confusion here. Just this is this is the right thing, um, and yeah, I will prepare the next example we're gonna be looking at. Okay, I found our example. This is gonna look super daunting, so we're gonna completely ignore the first two questions because um, this one we've already seen, and this one is um, I'm gonna uh, run through it because it can get pretty lengthy. So I don't want to um, get you guys confused or scared because, again, this is just like a very like short um, summary of everything. And I feel like if we end up doing this one, um, I'm going to get confused and I'm going to get you guys confused. So I think we'd rather just delete these. Um, so I'm just going to quickly show you guys what Q1 is. Um, 
we've seen this already. Uh, X bar, S, S, E. And with that, we go down here. Uh, we get our T stat, P val, or our favorite thing, descriptive statistics W, and then uh, alternative two sided hypothesis, a little horrible graph. Um, I promise I'm going to get better uh, for, <laughs> for point two to get to do uh, graphs. And here it's just doing a table. I don't want to get you guys confused because I, I haven't reviewed that yet. So I think it's better that I do that in a different video where I've actually seen everything um, instead of just like bullshitting you guys and just hoping to God something sticks. No, um, we want to be uh, clear, concise and convincing the three C's of entrepreneurship. So we're going to look at question three. So for this question, uh, a random sample. So again, just quickly look at, uh, uh, at our conditions. I'm pretty sure they are satisfied because not we, we wouldn't be doing this. That's how I approach most of the problems, but uh, you know, it's random. Um, uh, we will test the length and the skew if the teacher decided to give it to us. We do not have a skew. So there's no way to know, but just assume assume it's there uh, for all intents and purposes of this uh, exercise. So the first thing we have to do, it tells you here that persons with a BMI larger than 30 are considered obese. So right from the get go, we are already insulting people. Um, I'm kidding, but the, the examples we look at in this class, whether it's anorexia or obesity, they're, uh, I don't know, <laughs> we could look at something a little bit more positive. Um, so we have to use uh, MPWare. Again, um, I think I defined MPWare somewhere up here. Where is MPWare? Is I do not have it defined. I oh, know I had it here, but I deleted it. So uh, the first thing you're going to do is uh, you're going to look at BMI. So you do data frame dot uh, BMI. And it tells you people over 30 are obese. So you'd say obese. And uh, let's label this as um, healthy BMI. So that's what it's going to look like. So for obese, and I'm actually going to do that. So let's say obese is equal to one and healthy BMI is equal to zero. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to hash these out. So, but so you guys know, one is obesity, zero is a healthy BMI. So if we do df.head now, you now have obese. So here, BMI of 27, mm, healthy. 33, one, obese. So that's how this thing uh, looks like. So now that we have uh, our obese variable set, we can keep going. So it tells you here, create a new variable, da 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 da, -da. We have already did, done that. So what's next? Um, it tells you then test, so a hypothesis test, test if the percentage of insurers, of obese insurers is larger than 50%. So what do we do there? So already um, we have our P sub zero. So we have that this is 0.5, uh, 0 0.5. So we can already start uh, making assumptions about our hypothesis test. Uh, without calculating maybe five percent confidence interval, no, that is not what we're looking at. Give me one second. So I just went ahead and copied the HA from the teacher. So you have that your null hypothesis is that the proportion is equal to zero point five, and that your HA is uh, that the proportion is less than 0 0.5. So that already tells us this is going to be a one-tailed test. And we're going to try to prove if it's greater than, remember, the where the arrow points, that's where you have to uh, 
calculate. So what do we do next? So let's make our little um, our little uh, checklist. So we have our p sub zero, which is equivalent to a mu. Um, since it's proportions, I'm pretty sure we're gonna need a p hat, but I'm gonna uh, verify that later. Have our standard error, um, and we're gonna. By the way, um, we're gonna look at these on the on the exercise because I think there is no need to uh, do them from scratch um, because we've already seen the same process, so it gets repetitive. So going back to here, um, okay, yeah, I I think I paused, I don't know. Uh, so we have our X, we have our N. So uh, if you remember from our checklist, we have our P hat, which is equivalent to X over N. So um, the standard error for proportions is a bit different. You use um, P sub zero and Q sub zero. So you do your square root of p sub zero times q sub zero, and you divide it by n. Um, again, this is something we've already seen. Um, I don't want to overwhelm you guys with uh, so many um, formulas and everything. So we're just I'm just going to explain what the teacher is doing here in terms of uh, in terms of formulas, and then we're going to use uh, the Python documentation uh, to solve this. So here we have our C stat. Remember, as this is proportions, we're using C stat because proportions don't uh, need degrees of freedom that a T uh, test is going to need. So here we have our C stat. So similar to uh, the one that's like X minus mu over SE, our proportion one is similar in the sense that it's your sample statistic minus your population parameter over your standard error. So that is what the teacher is doing here. And finally, this one, I'm going to link it over here. So you can see that it's 1 minus. And as you recall, um, from here, we know that the arrow is pointing this way. So we're using 1 minus to calculate this. So that is a quick, simple, and easy way um, to do this with formulas. Um, I think you guys should know the process already. Do your checklist, uh, get your uh, your sample statistic p hat, get your population parameter p sub zero, um, get your standard error, get your c statistic, and calculate your p value from that. So as you can see, and if I move this. Um, <clears throat> We have that our alpha value is 0 0.05. So uh, our p value is low. So p is low. What happens? We reject h o. So that is the gist of it, of how to get it with formulas. In the exam, don't uh, use the formulas. Use the Python documentation. So I just wanted to uh, get you guys clear on what exactly we're going to be doing with the Python documentation. Okay, so I went ahead and copied um, a couple of documentation, or sorry, a couple of formulas from the teacher's example. So you have your x, um, and let's just remember our formula for p hat x over n. So this formula, your s and p proportions, you need um, your uh, number, your x, which is your Oh, I did that. Okay. I'm sorry. You have your x, which is your count. So we're putting this here. This part, you can look at it as p hat. So you, we have your x. So this part here. Let's put a little thing here called p hat. Um, so you do x, and the knobs is n, because that's your number of observations. What do we do next? You, similar to, um, this one, you need to put your value of which um, you're calculating, or sorry, you're testing your, um, let's delete this, because that's like a spoiler warning. <laughs> uh, that's going to give us a wrong one, it doesn't matter. Um, 
we were telling it, hey, this is the population parameter I'm trying to calculate over. So this is your p sub zero, which is this here. And finally, for alternative, use larger, because if you remember, our graph looks like this. This is the arrows pointing this way uh, here. So we say larger. And if we uh, clear everything here, and we print our C stat. We're gonna see that <laughs> uh, I I meant to print the few out. We're gonna see that it gives us the exact same answer as here almost. This is just rounded, but we also know that the P is uh, low and we reject our null hypothesis. That is a summary on one sample hypothesis testing, which is block uh, 4.1. So I'm just going to edit this uh, on the mother load document. And yeah, that's all you need to know. A quick summary. Again, this is not too in-depth, not to confuse you guys, just to give you the basics so you aren't as lost. So yeah.